1947, when Jackie Robinson joined the Brooklyn Dodgers and left the Negro Leagues behind, he triumphed in integrating Major League Baseball. He was a phenomenal baseball player and led his team to many championships and won MVP. Although, tragically, nobody thought he should be allowed to play and treated him horribly because he was an African-American. He overcame a lot of adversity and helped change civil rights forever. Jackie Robinson was born in Cairo, Georgia on January 31st, 1919. Jackie Robinson's childhood would be considered a wild one. He would sell newspapers and vending hot dogs at the Rose Bowl Stadium. He would make a dollar here and there. Jackie Robinson loved to play sports at recess. He loved playing sports his whole life. He could be nice, but he also was mischievous. He was also part of a street street gang. They shoplifted and started to get in trouble. It took two men, a local minister and a neighborhood mechanic to talk Robinson into becoming good again and convincing him of his potential. Robinson wasn't just an exceptional baseball player. He played five sports in high school. He played baseball, basketball, football, track, and soccer. He went to UCLA college and played baseball, football, track, and basketball there. Jackie Robinson was given an athletic scholarship at, at, to UCLA. At UCLA, he met his future wife, Rochelle Robinson, but he had to leave college for financial reasons in 1941. Robinson joined the Army in 1942. He never faced any combat, though. He had an altercation with authorities about discrimination and was discharged in 1944. The reason he was discharged was because he refused to move to the back of a seg segregated bus. The most luxurious possession, the richest treasure anybody has, is his personal dignity. Jackie Robinson explaining his opinion about the most luxurious possession is personal dignity, 1955. In 1944, there were two leagues of baseball, the Negro Leagues for the African Americans and the National League of Baseball for the Whites. Robinson was playing in the Negro Leagues. There were two leagues of baseball because of segregation. Segregation was a thing back then that separated African-American people from white people because they didn't like African-Americans. The African-Americans had no choice. They had, to pay, they had to play in the Negro Leagues. The treatment that the African-American people received was unfair and horrible. They had to sit in the back of buses. They had to drink from different worst water fountains used different, worse bathrooms, and more. Jackie Robinson helped end segregation. There's not an American in this country free until everyone is free. Jackie Robinson explaining his thoughts on America and segregation rights, 1947. In 1945, Branch Rickey, the general manager for the Brooklyn Dodgers, wanted Jackie Robinson to play Major League Baseball for the Dodgers. He wanted Jackie because they were struggling and needed some new players. Branch Rickey wanted Jackie Robinson, particularly not because Jackie Robinson was the best player in the Negro Leagues, but because of his background. A four-sport athlete at UCLA, he was well-educated, soon to be married, and quite comfortable playing on integrated teams. Branch Rickey wanted Robinson to sign a contract to play Major League Baseball for the Brooklyn Dodgers. Robinson accepted their offer and signed the contract on October 23, 1945. Jackie Robinson played in the minor leagues for two years and in 1947 he made his Major League debut. Many people thought Jackie shouldn't be allowed to play because of his color or race. Before the season started, all of the team's managers took a vote on if Robinson should be allowed to play. The vote was 15 to 1, and the 1 was the Dodgers manager, Brand Turkey. The 15 was the other manager saying he shouldn't be allowed to play. When news broke out that Jackie Robinson was joining the Dodgers, a professional baseball team as an African American, rumors of strikes broke out and lots of players went on strike. Brand Turkey made Jackie Robinson promise to never fight back when confronted with racism. I am not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All that I ask is that you respect me as a human being. Jackie Robinson, explaining how he doesn't care if you dislike him 
because of his personality, but you can respect him even though he's an African American. 1948. On April 15, 1947, Jackie Robbins' debut was against the Boston Braves. Jackie shattered the color barrier in front of more than 25,000 spectators at Ebbets Field in Brooklyn, New York on opening day. The greatest moment in the history of baseball, MLB Commissioner Robert Manfred on Jackie Robinson joining the Brooklyn Dodgers. Jackie walked into the field. He was spit at. Racial slurs were yelled at him. Robinson was also abused, and he received lots of other harassment. This ain't fun, but watch me. I'll get it done. Jackie Robinson describing how all the harassment isn't fun, but he'll still continue fighting. 1947. He went hitless on the day, but his remarkable talent was already on display in the bottom of the seventh. Robinson laid down a sacrifice bunt, and his blazing speed forced a throwing error. Robinson eventually came around to score, part of a three-run rally that would eventually prove to be the difference in a 5-3 to three Brooklyn win. Above anything else, I hate to lose. Jackie Robinson describing his opinion about losing in 1950. The harassment continued. Fans continued to yell racial slurs at Robinson. Pitchers would throw balls at him. Players refused to play against Jackie Robinson in the Brooklyn Dodgers. People did anything to make Jackie stop playing baseball, and Jackie Robinson never retaliated. Already got rid of several like you. One was just found in the river just recently. A racist spectator expressed his hate about Robinson playing MLB by writing a note about threatening to kill Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson wasn't just playing baseball for himself. He wanted change in civil rights and wanted African Americans to be equal and accepted. Jackie kept fighting through all of this and was rewarded for not retaliating. Jackie Robinson succeeded in putting the racial harassment inside. In his first year, he hit 12 home runs and had 175 hits. Jackie kept impressing people. He led the league in stolen bases with 29 and he had a stunning batting average of .297. He also helped the Dodgers win the National League pennant and was selected Rookie of the Year. Robinson's teammates, fans, and other people started to accept him. Branch Ricky, Pee Wee Reese, and Leo DeRoucher were always on Jackie's side no matter the circumstances. Over the years, the amount of harassment he received decreased. In 1949, Jackie Robinson was awarded MVP. During Robinson's MVP season in July 1949, he was also testifying about discrimination before the U.S. House of Representatives. He led the league with a 342 batting average, led the league in stolen bases, and got a career high 124 runs drove in. The Dodgers finished the 1949 season with a 97 57 record. They advanced all the way to the World Series for the second time in his third year in law. In Robinson's decade long career with the Dodgers, he and his team won the National League pennant several times. Finally, in 1955, he helped them achieve their ultimate goal, winning the World Series. The Dodgers beat the New York Yankees. He helped the team win more than one National League pennant the following season. Jackie Robinson retired on January 5, 1957. On July 23, 1962, Jackie Robinson was inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Jackie Robinson's success led to other African Americans playing Major League Baseball, such as Hank Aaron, Satchel Paige, and Willie Mann. Jackie Robinson's number was officially retired in April, on April 15, 1997, the 50th anniversary of the day he broke the color barrier for Major League Baseball. No one would ever wear Jackie's number 42 in baseball again. Martin Luther King would later honor Jackie for his hard work and determination towards changing civil rights. When King made his famous I Have a Dream speech, Jackie Robinson was standing right there by Martin Luther King watching his children for him. Jackie Robinson died of a heart attack on October 24, 1972 at the age of 53. After Jackie Robinson's death, his wife, Rachel Robinson, established the Jackie Robinson Foundation, with help, which helps young people in need of college funds. Jackie Robinson was a spectacular person. He triumphed in helping change the segregation laws.